If you were anything like me, when you first started playing Cyberpunk, you would go to Breach a Protocol and not have a clue how to do these puzzles. In this video, not only will I show you how to solve them, I will show you how to ace them every time, as well as I will also be showing you where to find a really good chip early in the game that will make your life so much easier doing these hacks. Okay, so now what I need to do is actually rewind and pause this example that we're going through and I want to guide you through the thought process you should be having every single time you open up one of these puzzles uh, before you even look at the grid. So for now, I'm actually going to hide the grid just so we can focus on the other aspects of this, which uh, you should be looking at first. So uh, you have your breach time. Usually that's not actually the most important thing. I've got it as low as six seconds, which I think is as low as it will go. And uh, I've never had an issue with it. Uh, but what you want to look at is your buffer and your sequence required to upload. Uh, so in this example, this is actually a really good example. And the reason why it is, is because you are actually able to, if you have a buffer of six or five, you can actually solve both of these, assuming the grid matches up with it. And I'm going to explain why. So before I can explain that, I quickly have to just explain how these grids work really quickly. I'm just assuming that I'm talking to someone that has no idea how to do this. Uh, if you do know how to do this, it's great. It'll be quick. Uh, basically, you have to select one on the top row first. And then depending on which one you select on the top row, you have to select one from the row below it next. And then you have to select one horizontally and then vertically and then horizontally and then vertically until you either run out of a buffer or you can't select the correct uh, sequence anymore. So if I were going for the ice pick combo, I would click the 7A at the top and then I would go down to E9 at the bottom and then to one of the 55s, there's three of them, on the bottom row and then I would unlock the ice pick one. One thing I would not be able to do to solve it though is click the 7A at the top, the E9 at the bottom, and then one of the 55s above it. The reason for this is because that would be doing a vertical row twice which does not follow the rules and it will not allow you to do that. Okay so sequences, how do they work? Well, in this case, what you want to be looking for is if the end of one sequence is the beginning of another sequence. So in this case, both of them actually line up to that. So that means that possibly I can start with the ice pick and then if I end on 55, the beginning of the mass vulnerabilities 55 will be selected and then all I'll have to click is B, D, and 7a and that would line up with my buffer of 5. Now the reason for this is because I would only be clicking 5 buttons. That's what your buffer allows. Similarly if I had a buffer of 4 I would only be able to solve one of these max because there's no possible way to solve both of them well, with only clicking four buttons. It requires at minimum five buttons. But if I had a buffer of six, it would actually mean that I could click one button either at the beginning of the first sequence or at the end of the second sequence. And if there were more sequences like three or four, then I could actually click it in between one of those and I would still be able to continue on. And I'm going to explain exactly how that works really quickly. Okay, so I am in an area of the map that is of very high right now, and I am a lower level. So one thing you need to know is uh, about your, where the heck is it? There we go, uh, your buffer size. That's super important to how you are going to be able to do these hacks because your buffer size literally will make it so that sometimes you can only pick between one or the other or you might not even be able to do any at all if it's a really high one. So I have a buffer size of five right now, which isn't great. 
it's still the basic one that you start with or the second one you start with. Um, so what I need to do here is if I hack this guy right here, right here, so 55 to 1C to ZA, okay? So I can go either, I can start here and go here, here, and then I would go here to here to here to here. Or actually, technically, this one would count towards this one, and then this one would be the next one and the next one. So I need at least under a perfect circumstance, I haven't looked at this area yet, but under a per perfect circumstance, this would need to be a buffer size of one, two, three, three again, because this one would overlap, four, five, six. Now, that is just for one part of it. The other part that's important to note is sometimes, uh, this is not a case where this uh, is apply applicable, but sometimes if I want to do this one, there might not be a ZA at the top here. And if there's no ZA at the top, that means I have to click on a 55. So if there was a 55, let's say these ZAs weren't here. Okay, this is actually a bad example. We're gonna exit out. And this is another thing. It's actually really important to note about these hacks. If you don't like how it looks, you can exit out of it. And then in uh, 15 seconds or however long it takes, you, want trouble? you will be able to do it again. Yo, you want trouble? You want trouble? You want trouble? All right. Let's just ready to scan this again. All right. So now, here we go. This one is a better example because, I, actually, no. This one's uh even worse than the other one we had. It's because this one you have to go one C to Z A to one C. But then none of these overlap. So you want one of the end ones to overlap with one of the beginning ones. And because none of them overlap, you need a buffer of six. And you know that because as soon as I click one of these, so if I, so this is actually an example where, okay, I would have to go BD to 1C55. And that would be one of them. But then it would let me go to 1C. But then as soon, no, actually, would it? No, one. As soon as I click 1C, it's going to fail because it's going to have pushed this one too far out that it will require 6 and I won't be able to do it. But let me show you what I mean. I click BD and this moves forward. So now I click 1C. That one actually, it didn't move forward because I forgot that they, they match up, but now it's going to push forward and fail. Now freezing on this moment right before I click 55, the reason why it fails as soon as that happens is because as soon as I click 55, the 1C, uh, 7A, 1C is going to reset and move forward like this. And as soon as it does that, it's going to be past our buffer amount and it's going to fail. If you're still fairly early into the game and want a good chip with a 7 buffer, there is this area on the map right here, and if you just come to this market, you can go to this okay. guy and buy a pretty good chip from him. Pretty good one. Got a buffer size of 7, a RAM of 6, and it's got 4 slots, and it costs 15000 Okay, so hopefully by now you have a good idea of how to solve these. Uh, here's one last example where I have seven as a buffer now, and it requires at least six to solve it, but it's a little tricky. Let's find which one we need to start with. So it's going to be 7A because there's no E9s here. So we go 7A, E9 to 1C, and we actually only need one more 1C. So that's actually not going to work, that one right there. 1C... 1C E9 to 1C, and uh, actually we can't do it that way. We actually have to go 7A to E9 to 1C, 
and then we have to go right to another E9 to 1C, 1C. And the reason for that is because I'm not actually able to click 1C again, or I'm not able to, so because it goes 7 to E9, so once I click E9, it's going to cancel out this one too. And then when I click out 1C, it's going to cancel out this one too. So that will finish this one and it would finish both of them if I were able to click E9 or 1C one more time. But because I don't have the option for 1C, I actually have to restart it when I finish this one and go to E9 to 1C to 1C again. So we'll do that. E9 to 1C. And now I can't click 1C again. So we actually have to restart it and 1C and 1C. All right, key takeaways. First, always examine the sequence and the buffer limit before you even look at the grid. Sometimes the grid doesn't even matter if the sequence and the buffer limit don't match up to what you're trying to do. And if they don't, you can always reset. Uh, sometimes it doesn't make it better, but a lot of times it does. It makes it easier. Uh, reset, it just takes about 15 seconds usually to wait for it to reset. Next, plan out your path ahead of time. It makes it so much easier to know what you're doing if you plan out your path ahead of time. And lastly, upgrade your chip. It'll just make your life so much easier. Playing on a 4 or 5 buffer is not easy. It makes it a lot harder later in the game you go. Consider going to the chip that I showed in the video. It's only 15,000 euros and it's a lot better than a lot of the other early chips. And that's it. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, Consider helping me by liking the video and subscribing. It's free to do and it ensures that you don't miss future videos. I also stream on Twitch if you want to follow me over there. Thanks.